Hi, my name is Trey Brimmer. I'm with Mitel. Today I'm going to go over the 6900 series phones with you and we'll briefly talk about voicemail. Um, there's uh, three phones that you guys have in your offices. Uh, one's a 6920. That's the most prevalent phone you have out there. Uh, you have a 6930 and you have some 6940s out there. So I'm going to show you each of them. We're mostly going to concentrate on the 6920s. But if you have any of those phones, they basically all work very similar. Uh, so we'll kind of talk about the differences and the similarities between them uh, so you have an idea of uh, even going through this training, you can operate any of those phones. A few things to remember, uh, the phone system is now cut over. Uh, so you will use an 8 for an outside line. I believe you're used to using that. Uh, so dial 8, and you'll need to dial the area code and phone number even for local dialing. So that's a little bit different for you guys, um, but you will no longer need a 1, yeah, even for, for long distance or for 800, either one. But you will need the area code for even local calling. So area code and phone number for everything. Um, your default passcode for both your voicemail and for your, a thing called hot desk, which is the ability to log into a phone and kind of take it over, uh, is going to be four ones. If you haven't set up your voicemail yet, once you set up your voicemail, it'll have you uh, put in your greeting and put in your name, and it'll also have you change your passcode. And when it ch you change your passcode there, it'll also change your hot desk password. So if you change it to one, two, three, four, that'll be your hot desk passcode. So we'll kind of look at hot desking here in a second. But hot desking is the ability to log into the phone and uh, say you have a big project you want to spread out in the conference room, uh, you could take over the phone that's in the conference room by hot desking into it. And then calls that are dialed to your extension will ring that phone and it'll show all your buttons that you've created for the phone and give you all your features. You can even check your voicemail from it. So it basically takes over that phone. Here's what a 6920 looks like. That's the one we're going to be mostly talking about. But you're going to see here in a second that the 6920 is very similar to the 6930, which is the second uh, biggest amount of phones you have. Uh, the only big difference here is some additional uh, buttons that, um, mimic, that are on either side of the display. So you ha rather than have six uh, offset buttons, you'll have uh, 12. So we'll kind of look at that. But this is what a 20 looks like. You can see the first what we're going to do when we start talking is we're going to start at this top area in the black where you see the little round navigation key. And then we're going to work our way on either side of the key keys where you see those kind of uh, uh, more icons instead of words. Uh, so I'll explain what all those are for. So that's a, that's a, kind of the way we're going to work it. Uh, this is what a 6930 looks like. It's identical. It looks a little stretched in this picture, but it's the same size as the 6920 was. But this one has an additional six keys on the other side, so it gives you a little more real estate for uh, for creating extension numbers and that kind of thing. Um, it also, when you upgrade to this level, some of the phones, you do have the ability also to sync up your mobile phone to this this uh, desk phone where you could have any of any calls that come to your mobile phone uh, ring your desk phone. So it, you do all have the ability for when your desk phone rings to ring your mobile phone, but you don't always have the ability for your mobile phone to ring your desk phone. So that's when it, that's what comes with this 6930 or the 6940. Uh, this is the 30. Uh, the other feature it provides you, um, again, is you can have an, an a, optional, uh, by default, it'll come with a corded handset, but you can get an optional cordless handset, but I don't believe you have any of those for this particular phone. Here's what a 6940 looks like. The only difference between what we're talking about is that uh, it comes with a cordless handset. The cordless handset on these phones allow you to do the volume up and down on the handset as well as mute and hang up. Uh, but you won't be able to dial out of the handset if, it's, if you're not near the phone. Uh, it also gives you a touch display. So when you touch the screen, rather than have the offset buttons on either side of the display, as well as it kind of flips the soft keys. And I'll show you what I mean. This kind of a gray area up top uh, it flips that kind of up to the top rather than the bottom. But otherwise, it's going to operate uh, exactly the same way. It's going to have the same features and send the same functionality. And again, with this, the 30 or the 40, you can have a button on your desk phone that will allow you to answer anyone who's dialed your cell phone. So it's kind of integrates the phone together. 
Okay. On the uh, 6920s or 30s, you're going to have this navigation key. The way that navigation key works is the outside ring will allow you to go left, right, up, or down. And then the very center is a select key. So if you are scrolling through your call history and you want to dial someone back, you can hit select and it would begin the process of dialing them back. So that's how that navigation key will work for you. On a daily basis, if you're just making calls in or receiving calls, you're not going to need the navigation key. It's only when you're going through some of the features like call history, contacts, or if you want to go to a second page that the phone has, you'll use this kind of navigation key. So I'll refer to it as we roll through it you know what keys what but that's what that is uh, hot desking into your phone that's that feature that allows you to take over phone uh, you can also maybe at the very beginning when we place your phone we hot desk into that phone for you but if for some reason you weren't here's what it's going to look like it's going to say locked and uh, in the center of the display and it'll say hot desk uh, down below those are considered what's called soft keys so you can uh, you know that meaning that gray area down there is dynamic and it changes depending on the conditions of the phone right now while the phone is not logged into it's going to offer you that ability to log into it you can also see i, I uh, kind of circled up top where it, there's a pound as a second uh kind of a symbol in the extension number just to indicate again that it's locked locked means that you can dial 911 or the operator but you won't be able to dial uh, outside line or receive any inbound calls so that's what that means. So let's log into this phone uh, just to show you how it works. We're going to hit the hot desk key and then I'm going to put in my extension number, hit enter. And then I'm going to put in my pin. If you haven't set up your voicemail, that pin's going to be four ones. But if you set up your voicemail, you're going to use your voicemail uh, pin number that you used. So if you changed it to one, two, three, four, that's the pin you're going to put in there. And then you hit enter. And the phone will log in. And this is what the phone looks like when you're on a 20. If you're on a 30, it's going to look the same. Just have the buttons on the other side that you will be blank and available for you to program. If you're on a 40, it's going to be very similar also. You're going to have the same features, uh, but you'll have more real estate that you can program blank keys to be outside numbers or extension numbers. Uh, so that's how it works. So let's start at the top and work our way down. Uh, start with the blue area at the very top. Well, under the MyTel symbol up top, you'll see... Uh, if you're facing the phone uh, or, my, or my display, it's over to the left-hand side top. You'll see the extension number. That'll be the extension number of your phone. And then over to the right-hand side, you see there's a little symbol of a person. These are just indicators to let you know what's going on. You won't have to press any keys to get to those. First one just means that you're logged in, so you're hot desked into the phone. The little ricochet four means that you have missed four calls. This particular phone has, but it, yours might be a two or a one or nothing. And the little box area just means you're connected to the network. As you move along within the phone, there's other symbols that will show up. There will be a little reel-to-reel uh, -reel looking symbol uh, when you have voicemail. And then when you're in Do Not Disturb, it puts up a little circle with a line through it to let you uh, know that you're in, you're in Do Not Disturb. So a couple of different things will pop up there. But that's where you look to to see what's going on with your phone. The um, Starting over below the extension number, over on the left hand side you see where it says my phone and it says line two those are your inbound call appearances so an inbound call will start at the top and work its way down my phone is there now but when a call comes in it's going to take over where it says my phone and put the caller identification number there and in the open area between where the extension number is i'm sorry between where the uh time and date is and it says redial will be where the caller identification name and number is shown so you'll get a ring obviously and see that blink and have caller id popping up uh, if you're ever on a call and a second call comes in, your line two will then show the caller ID. And when the phone is ringing, giving you a ring indicator, it won't ring the whole time you're on the first call, but it'll give you a little ring spurt. It is also showing you caller ID for the next call coming in. If you decide you want to grab the second call, but keep the first call on hold, nice feature on this is you can just hit the offset button for the second line key, and it'll automatically put the first caller on hold. So you don't have to find the hold key. I'll show you what the hold key is, though, in case you prefer to do it that way. But you can just hit the second line key uh, to, do, to do that. The blank key on the phone, 
Uh, the one under Leaf Line 2 is available for you to program to be an outside number or an internal extension. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. And then you have D&D, &D, which is Do Not Disturb. That shuts your phone off for inbound call traffic. You can still make outbound calls, but um, you won't receive any calls. They'll go straight to voicemail when you press that key. We put on two, two features for you. Um, not to be confused with Bluetoothing your cell phone, these are the ability for you to uh, basically have your cell phone ring in tandem or twinned with your desk phone. So if you are walking away from your desk and you wanna make sure you don't miss a call, you can press the cell phone on off button and it'll ring both your desk phone and your cell phone at the same time, but it'll end up in your desk phone voicemail rather than go to your cell phone. So it's just basically including your cell phone um, and this is going to be available on all the sets, the 20s, the 30s, or the 40s. Uh, the, one, the one thing I was talking about earlier that's only available on the 30s and the 40s sets are the ability for your, when your cell phone rings for it to ring your desk phone. Also, when you do that Bluetooth setup, similar to how it is on a newer car, uh, it'll also bring in your contacts if you'd like, and it also brings in your call history for your cell phone. So that's two features that are available only in the 30 and 40, but you guys will all have the ability if you needed it, uh, it's on there for you to answer your cell phone and grab a desk phone call, which is nice. Um, above that, hand off, uh, the cell phone on off is handoff. That's the ability, once you've answered that call that came in, and you've answered it on your cell phone to send it back to your desk phone. So if I'm walking to my desk and I pick up an inbound call that rang at my desk on my cell phone, when I get to my desk, if I want to send it back to my desk phone, I can do it by hitting the handoff key and it sends it, rings my desk phone. When I pick it up, it immediately sends a call over to that. It's seamless to the caller. They won't know the difference. And it also works the opposite way. Say I'm at my desk phone and, um, I need to go home, you know, It's but I'm on this conference call. I can hand it off to my cell phone and walk out of the building. So it gives me ability to shoot it back and forth between my desk phone and my cell phone. It only works if the phone was originated from your desk phone or if the call that you picked up on your cell phone was, point, was one that was dialed to your desk phone and you grabbed it on your cell phone. If a cell phone call comes, you're not going to be able to hand it off to uh, your desk phone. It's only when a, it's twinned, basically, and you've answered the twin phone on your, on your uh, cell phone. Below um, that is a gray area, and you can see it says logged out, log out and uh, redial. Uh, log out is logging it out. So if I wanted to take over this phone by hot desking into it, I could log you out and put myself in there. So that's where you see that key. Once you're logged in, that hot desk goes away, but once it goes away, it, it replaces it with log out. So I can log out if I wanted to. And it also allows me to redial. It's showing in the display right now because the phone is idle. It says redial and it has an ex a number in there. So if I push redial, that's a number it's going to dial. So anything displayed in there, that's what's going to redial when I hit the redial button. And then you can see below that there's a little blue uh, key, a little blue dot, and then there's a, another little circle that isn't colored in. That's because there's multiple pages on this phone. You'll have another six buttons to, to mess with if you'd like on the, on the 20, and you'll have 12 more on the next page. And if you wanted to, if you had a 30, and quite a few more if you have a 40. I'm not sure the number exactly. But uh, you'll have more keys available for you to program. Here's the uh, way you get to the second page. It's You can see right now the first little dot is blue. And then if you push your arrow over to the right-hand side, it's going to move you to the second page. That second page is going to be blank. And all you have to do to program one of those buttons, it's similar to how it is in your car radio, most people's car radio. You hold the button you want to program down. And when you do, it pops up uh, this box in your display. It'll say speed call, other features, and more. More really just gives you uh, the uh, an address. Uh, speed call is pretty much what you're gonna use. You can label it using the uh, keys on your telephone to pick the right letters. And then you uh, use the navigation key to scroll down. You put in the phone number. Uh, remember, an eight area code and phone number. If it's an outside number, if it's an extension, put in the extension. Making it private. I have that uh, highlighted. It means that it'll show 
on the button the display or the label, but it won't show the phone number if you make it private. So if you want to put your home phone number up there, but you don't want people walking past your desk to see your home phone, then uh, you can make it private, okay? Uh, other features, uh, there not a lot you're gonna need. Uh, the one is uh, mobile line if you have a, a 6930 phone or a 6940 phone, that's how you could set up a key on your phone. So if you're within Bluetooth distance of your phone, you'll have that line that you can answer your cell phone calls on. Um, otherwise, there's not a lot of features here you're gonna use. So you're, you're probably not gonna use call forward or the phone lock or any of those. But I wanted to show you that for the you people who are using the uh, 30s and 40 phones. Everyone who has a 20 can't make their cell phone ring on their desk. Remember, you all have the ability to do the opposite where you have your desk phone ring your cell phone, but you don't all have this same ability if your cell phone rings to answer it on your desk phone. So next uh, little portion is here's what it looks like when an incoming call comes in. Here comes my incoming call. You can see it's replaced my line where it said my phone on there uh, with the caller identification number. Uh, it'll be flashing that button and uh, that little symbol of the little phone that you see there is going to be blinking as well. Uh, you can see the caller ID comes up with name and number. It says it's calling. You can see that no longer does it say redial because a call's coming in. I only have the ability to answer it. If I hit answer, I'm answering it on my uh, speakerphone. If I just wanted to answer, pick up the handset and you're answering it on your handset. Uh, once I've answered the phone call, It'll start a timer, you can see that, and it continues to hold the number up there at the top. And then you can see down in the gray area, it's changed that display to allow me to hit transfer or add user or end call. Transfer is the ability to send a call to another destination. And add user is when you wanna set up a conference call. On these phones, you can do seven other people and yourself on a conference call, so that's eight people total. Um, and uh, really kind of the transfer or the ad user will take you to the same place. So even if you were thinking you were gonna transfer it and then you realize after you talk to the person you're transferring it to, you're really setting up a conference, you could do that at the last minute and I'll show you kind of how that works. So uh, we got the call, now what do we wanna do? We wanna go ahead and transfer a call. So to do that, here I am, I'm gonna hit the transfer key now that I'm live on this call. And uh, once I press that, key it's going to I'm going to dial in your extension number or I can also transfer to an outside number if I wanted to I'd hit the eight and then the uh, outside number with area code and then I if I want to complete it I hit transfer again if I don't hit transfer right away I'll hear your phone ring the person I'm transferring it to and I can have a private conversation with that person hey here's this person and you say sure send it to me I can hit transfer to complete it so that would be just transferring a call. There's some other features available as well. Join calls is if I decided at the last minute I wanted to put this call together with all three of us. So I went hit transfer, I dialed your extension. You said, hey, can you stay on this call? I can say, sure, join calls, we're all joined together. The other feature next to that is called trade calls. Trade calls is just a feature, but what it allows me to do without canceling the transfer I set up already, Say I, I hit transfer, I dialed your extension, and I said, hey, someone from ABC Company is on the phone from you. And you said, hey, well, I deal with four or five people from them. Who is it from ABC Company? Well, I don't want to cancel the uh, transfer and start over. So what I could do is hit trade calls. That'll take me to the original caller. I can have a conversation with them private. Hey, I'm sorry, what was your name? And I, once I get that name, I could trade back to you and say the name. And if you said, sure, send them through, I'd hit transfer that completes it and sends it to you and I can hang up my phone. So it's a way I could bounce between the two callers if I needed to. I've never really used the feature myself, haven't seen the need, but um, it's there for you if you need it. If for some reason I hit transfer and I dialed your extension and you picked up and I said, I have someone from ABC company and you said, oh, I can't take the call right now. Can you tell them to call me back in an hour? Um, I wouldn't wanna trade the call because that leaves me within the transfer. So what I would do is hit the back to held. That will cancel the transfer out and allow me to just talk to the original person calling in and either redirect them to somewhere else or go ahead and uh, you know finish the call off. So that would end basically get back to the caller if I went back to held. So that's how that works. Making a conference call, it's almost identical. Uh, it takes you to the same second screen. 
Here we are with the inbound call coming in. I would hit add user. Uh, I could dial then an outside number or an internal extension. And this could be a call that you called me, I called you, it doesn't matter. I'm on a call with a second person and now we wanna add a third and a fourth and a fifth or whatever. So I'll go ahead and hit add user. And once I do that, it takes me to the exact same screen when I was transferring it, but rather than hit transfer, I'm gonna hit join calls. Join calls will then, <coughs> excuse me, join calls will then join us all together. I still have the ability to trade back and forth. So if I want to trade between the calls, I could. I can go back to held if for some reason I called, reached out to somebody who wasn't there. Um, but I can hit join calls. We're all joined together. When I hit that, it says on the display three party conference. So it gives you an indicator to let you know you're all connected together. And then I could go back and add another person and it could be a four party conference and then a five party conference. You can see also it has the ability to hit split. Split is to split the call off onto their own lines. So basically, if someone was saying something I didn't want them to say, I could split them off. Once I split them off, it'll say trade again, and I can go between the users and say shut up or whatever I need to say. Also, I have the ability to leave the call. So if I'm the only internal person on this conference call, say I'm helping you out, you call me and say, hey, would you mind getting me uh, this other person? And uh, I get them on and then I realize I don't need to be on this call anymore. I could go ahead and hit leave call and I'd be all out. So if I'm setting up the conference for you, then I can get off of it if I want. If there's another internal person on the call, you don't have to leave call. You can just hang up the phone. But if you're the only internal person, maybe setting up a conference for two or three people outside of the office, then you'll need to hit the leave call to keep the, the uh, conference call going. Okay. Let's talk about the buttons below the display. Uh, they're all the same on all the phones, so no big difference here. Uh, let's start at the top and work our way down. Now there is a difference between the one side or the other. Um, when we're looking at the phone currently, the left-hand side is going to be more feature-driven. It's gonna be things like, um, you know, call history and uh, voicemail and setup, like uh, a uh, uh, settings key and volume control and that kind of stuff. So stuff that doesn't really have much to do with the call per se, but it has to do with things you do beyond the call. You know, I'm gonna look up my call history, I'm gonna check my voicemail, that kind of thing. The other side is more to do with the physical call that has come in. So a call comes in, I wanna hold it or mute it or be on speaker, that kind of thing. So it's gonna have more of the rest of the features. The two features that you saw with, that were integrated into the dis, to that soft display area were transfer and conference. Uh, so that'll be the rest of them, mute, um, speaker, hold, you know, that sort of thing. So we'll, we'll talk about it, but let's start on the, on the left-hand side first, starting at the top. Uh, first thing you have is a contacts key. It's going to give you both a personal and a corporate contact uh, list. The personal ones are gonna be ones that you've added. Uh, you can add them two different ways. You can either manually add it by hitting the add new key, and then it'll bring up a box where you can put in the name and the number and another number if you wanted to, and you add that in. So um, that could be not only a personal, but you could add people internally if you wanted to in there. So you do have some buttons available that you could add you know, people that you call a lot, but maybe these are for people you don't call as much, but you wanna keep their information. You can also add people into your personal contacts through the call history, I'll show you that. So when you're in call history, if someone has called you and you're like, oh, I better keep that number, you can add them into your personal contacts. So that's kind of nice. <clears throat> the next one is your corporate contacts. Corporate contacts are going to be a search. So when you go to corporate contacts, it's going to be blank. Uh, because you need to put in at least a letter of the last name. So uh, you'll hit search and then put in at least one letter, if not more, into the search of the last name. So if I'm looking up somebody, you do by last name. The more letters you put in of the last name, the closer you're going to get. And it brings up all the matches below, and you use your navigation key to scroll over until you uh, and scroll down until you find the match you want. And then if you hit the center of the volume key, or the, the navigation key, it'll dial, but it'll also offer read uh, the dial on the bottom. I, I show that in the call history, which is the same way. Uh, so you can dial people back. So that's how that will work. If I keep scrolling over, so um, I was on the one page, if I keep scrolling over to the right-hand side, I can see the contact information on personal where I put it in and choose the number I wanna dial. 
Call history. Uh, it's the two arrows. That's going to be your call history. It'll show all or missed or outgoing or received. So it separates them out if you like to see them. Uh, you know, just the missed calls or whatever. You can use your navigation key to go down. If you have touch screen, you'll just touch the screen. Um, when you scroll over to a name, it'll highlight the name. And then I can hit the center of the navigation key to dial that person. Or you can see dial has showed up. And that would be the same in the contacts above. When you scroll over to a name, it, it says dial. But unlike your contacts, it's also going to offer you add contact. So if I went to my call history and I want to add you as a personal contact, I can add that here. I can also delete. I don't know why you do that, but you can. And then close it if I wanted to. So that's uh, your call history. If you uh, have a 30, a 6930 or a 40, you'll also have a, and you sync up your Bluetooth, uh, your phone to this, your cell phone to this, then you'll also have a category in uh, both the uh, contacts and in call history for your mobile phone. You'll see that show up in there. So kind of similar to how it is in your, in your, a newer car, if you have a newer car. Okay. Uh, here's your voicemail key. When you press that, it'll ask for your, uh, pin which is going to be the four ones and then whatever you make it it'll take you through a tutorial the first time you go in that'll help you set up your voicemail put in your name put in your number your new uh put in your name put in your pin i'm sorry not number and then uh I'll put in a greeting so you should be prepared to set up those three items uh, when you go in uh, best practice on this is to pick up the handset first and hit the button because when you have messages it acts differently than it does when you don't unless you pick up the handset but uh, best practice, pick up the handset, press the button, put in your PIN number, and away you go. Here's your settings key. This is going to be preference settings. You know, by default, the phone's ready to go, but you may want to change a few things or add something or set up your phone for, you know, Bluetooth if you have a uh, 30 or a 40. Um, so this is your settings. When you press that, it brings you to a screen that looks similar to this. Here's a couple I highlighted. Call forwarding, you really don't need because your cell phone, uh, you have that button. Uh, this would be mostly used by, uh, if someone has left the organization, I wanna forward their phone in case someone dials their extension up to the receptionist, I could do so. Uh, but mostly you're not gonna use that. Uh, if you did need to use a call forward, you just put in the phone number, eight area code phone number just like that and hit save and it'll turn it on basically. You can also do some conditional forwarding with this. I'm not gonna go too deep into that, but just if you're busy for internal or outside calls, you can put different numbers in for that. That means anytime you're on the phone, it'll forward to somewhere else. Or if you don't answer, which means it'll do the full three or four rings and then rather than go to voicemail, you can have it forward somewhere else. So those are some conditional forwarding. If you wanna know more about that, the manual is available. I sent it out and uh, you can ask for that. Here's your audio. You may want to change that. The rings are kind of sing-songy by default. And if you like that, you're good to go. But if you like to change it up a little bit, scroll over the audio. And then uh, you can do both a ring for internal or external ringing, meaning if an outside call comes to you, it'll ring different than an internal ring. All you do is scroll over uh, using your navigation key over to the right hand side and then go down. It'll play each one as you scroll over them. And then when you find the one you like, hit save. If you like more of a classic ring tone, you know, like a ringer, you know, bell or something, go towards the classics near the bottom, classic one through whatever. We'll have the more classic rings and you can set up one for uh, internal if someone's calling you or external, a different ringer, that way you know. So that's kind of a nice thing to know if that ring isn't to your preference. The display is a place you might also want to visit. Uh, that'll give you, uh, you may have noticed that you'll see the screensaver pop up uh, after five minutes. That's by default. Uh, you may want to up that a little bit if that bothers you. You have to wake up the phone by hitting a button. It's not broken. Um, so all you have to do is go into that display setting and uh, you'll see a couple things there. One is the brightness level. It's always at the very center, you know. Uh, so you may want to adjust that up or down uh, using the little gray arrow keys. In this case, to adjust those settings, you have to use those little arrow keys that are in the um, dynamic area or the uh, or the uh, uh, gray area down there. For some reason, you're not using the navigation key on that, but you can adjust that up. And then it has a screensaver timer. 
if you click on the there, you can put like 59 minutes. I don't think you can go above that. Won't do 120 or above, but it'll do 59. So you can change the screen saver timer so it doesn't go to sleep so quickly. You know, if you it only goes to sleep if you're not touching the phone. But some people don't touch the phone for five minutes or longer. When a call comes in, though, it'll wake up the phone. So if you don't care about that, you can leave it as is. If you want it to be a little bit uh, longer before you see that screen saver, you can adjust it right there. Here's your volume control on the outside of the phone. Each piece of volume is separate. Pick up the handset, you're adjusting that volume. Turn on the speaker, you're adjusting that volume. When a call rings in, don't grab the handset right away. Adjust the volume to your liking at that point, and then you can pick up the handset. It'll save that volume for you. Looking at the opposite side, like I was talking about earlier, where those are more adjusting settings and voicemail and call history and stuff, this is more call handling on this side. Again, in the soft area, we saw that the, that dynamic display, it showed you know how to do a transfer and a conference, but we didn't show you the rest of it. If you wear a headset, you'll be interested in this hang up key. Uh, if not, if you're not wearing a headset, it doesn't really make much difference to you on that. You don't really need it. Uh, but it's great if you wear a headset, that way you can hang up there and answer at the very bottom. Um, next key down is redial list. It's not the redial like it had on the soft display where it dials the last number, but it takes you to the call history outgoing list. So it's a quick way to get to the second or third call that came in earlier that you want to get to. So that's, that's what that is. Uh, this is your hold key. It'll hold the call for you. It looks like this on the display. It'll kind of blink and stuff. Uh, this is kind of uh, not animated, but you get the idea that it'll show it as a little pause up there and shows the caller ID. It says it's on hold. To recover it, you'll just hit the key corresponding to the uh, line that you have on hold, and uh, you'll have it. Mute unmutes the handset or the speaker. So you just press the mute key and you'll see it light red and then uh, you'll be muted. You can cough, sneeze or whatever you need to do uh, and no one will hear you until you press the button again. So it's a toggle, it turns on and off when you press the button. Next key down is your speaker or if you're wearing a headset, you'll use this key to uh, turn on your headset. Uh, so pretty easy on that. So um, before I move on and just quickly talk about voicemail, I do want to tell you that if you have a 30 or 40 phone, uh, you need to go to settings and go to a little Bluetooth symbol. As you scroll to the through the settings, you'll notice that it says Bluetooth. And when you go in there, you can sync up your Bluetooth. I do ask you to refer to your handout for that or your manual if you need to do that. There are a few people who in the office that should know how to do that at this point, but if not, uh, refer to your manual. Here's a, a sheet that's available to you guys. This is your, uh, basically your flow for your voicemail. The boxed area is how you can dial from different uh, scenarios, your phone, another person's phone, or from outside, how you can access your voicemail. It's basically the same as it was before. You're gonna use a star key to access a lot of it. Um, the rest of the of the sheet is just the flow of the voicemail. So really it does three things, plays messages. You can create a message to send out, or you can go into your user options and change your greeting, change your passcode, that sort of thing. Uh, playing messages underneath where it says P to play, you'll notice that there's some cheats that the system doesn't tell you. Star is the big one. It rewinds five second increments. There's always somebody who leaves you a message and says, call me back at 350444. And you're like, what? You can hit that star key and back up five seconds to hear that again. Uh, there is a fast forward on there and there is a pause for 30 seconds, uh, second increments. I'm not sure what you would use those for. Maybe if someone walks in your office when you're listening to your voicemail. Most of you though, once you're set up with your voicemail, you do get your uh, voicemail sent to your email. So you can just listen to them there. So navigating this may not even be an issue for you, but if you do like to get in, you will have to go into here to change your greeting. So if you're on vacation or that kind of thing, you have to go in anyway. But if you're just listening to your voicemail, you can quickly get in uh, and, and do that through your email. <clears throat> Uh, you always have the ability to make a message from here rather than call someone's extension and wait for it to go to their voicemail. So if I wanted to, I could press six and then dial your extension number and then leave you a message, record a message, and then leave it in your mailbox. Uh, anytime you're interested in any kind of delivery options, uh, you can see that I put those at the end there. So you can see you can mark things as confidential or uh, mark them as urgent if you want to move it to the front of their list. 
uh, and have them notify that there's an urgent message or mark it for a future delivery if you want to send all your messages out at 10 o'clock or something. Or you can get a return re uh, receipt so I can know when you listen to it. So if it's an urgent one, hey, I just want to make sure you didn't come in tomorrow because of a snowstorm, I can make sure you heard that message uh, so I don't have to reach you at home or whatever. So uh, those are some of the items in there. That, those sheets are out there available to you um, if you need it and uh, helps you kind of navigate the first few days. It should be very similar to what you had before, uh, but uh, uh, e sheet's helpful, I think. Uh, the default password's up there under the MyTel symbol, like we talked about, 1111, and that should get you going. So that's what I have on the phone and voicemail. Good luck setting up your phone. If, uh, if you have any questions, there are uh, manuals and, and quick reference guides available. And uh, good luck with your new phone, and thank you very much.